Hey, Hunters! Hey, there's a new update! I know. You know? Yes, and I bet I know more than you about it. Well, what about it? Yes, I know that. And also... Yes, of course. Okay, knowing things and reading minds is not the same thing. I knew you were going to say that. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, title update 2 for Sunbreak has released, and with it comes a whole new load of content for us to enjoy as hunters. But while some of this stuff is right up in your face, literally asking to be done, the new monsters, new afflicted monsters, they all just want you to fight them. There is also a number of things that are less obvious that the game won't shout at you to go do right from the get-go. So today, let's talk about some neat little things about title update 2 that you may or may not already know. First up, something that is pretty obvious if you have messed with the system at all so far is layered weapons. In World and Iceborne, when you wanted to use layered weapons, you would have to use materials and Zenny to change each individual weapon to look the way that you wanted it to look. But in Rise and Sunbreak, the system works quite a bit differently and much simpler. You unlock the ability to use a certain weapon as a layered style, and then it is forever in your item box like a piece of layered armor is. From this point, regardless of what version of a weapon you use, no matter what tree you choose to pick from, just go to the box and equip it in the layered equipment menu. One-time purchase, permanent use. Next Next up, we have the fact that your defense cap on armor has actually been raised. Every piece of armor in the game can now be upgraded even further than it previously could, three levels per piece higher than the previous cap, which winds up being an extra six defense per armor piece, which is 30 defense increase overall across all the armor pieces if you reach the new maximum on every single one of them. This isn't quite game changing, but it is a noticeable difference, about a 5% defense increase to most builds, so don't ignore this change. Go and upgrade your armor now, and those new difficult and challenging Added in this update will feel just that slight amount easier than they did before. Just do it. In relation to the concept of equipment and this title update, there is a neat little thing that is actually hidden about one of the new weapons that has been added, specifically the Flaming Espinas weapons. If you look at them in the weapon tree, they are all fire weapons quite clearly, with quite a healthy amount of element actually on them, as well as having great raw too, for the most part. But what isn't obvious at all about these is that they do also have some poison status on them hidden away. If you look at the description of each weapon, it mentions that they have a chance to poison an enemy. And if you use the weapon against anything, you will see poison clouds popping up on approximately 30% of weapon hits, which is the same way that poison would actually function if it was naturally on the weapon. Essentially, every single flaming espinas weapon is both fire and poison. It functions the way that poison normally does, but without a visible number that we can track. This does, however, make these weapons considerably better than they look at first glance for everyone. On the subject of weapons, there is also something neat going on with the DLC layered weapons that were added with this update, and before we get into it, I'm not here to judge either way whether they should exist as a microtransaction. We could talk about that another time. I'm just here to talk about a cool thing to do with them that was found by Reddit user MOPOP99, which is that each of them seems to be named after either a real-life historical weapon or mythological weapon here on Earth, which, when you think about it, sort of makes sense with the general name of Lost Code. Some particularly notable examples are the great sword being called Aska, which is short for Ascalon, the sword of St. George, the hammer being called Mjö, short for Mjolnir, the hammer of Thor in Norse mythology, and the gun lance being called Nier, which could be short for Gugnir, the spear of Odin. Each of these seems to be rooted in some sort of real-life lore, which is a neat little trick from Capcom, not necessarily something that will affect your gameplay at all, but just a fun note on the update itself. Moving on, there are obviously decorations unlocked from the new monsters that have been added, and there are decorations unlocked by the new afflicted monsters as well, but is there anything else hiding out there? Well, simply, the answer is yes. There are also four slot elemental decorations now in the game too, with each one giving you four ranks of its respective element attack up. These may be a bit harder to find if you don't know that they're there, though, as they are specifically unlocked by doing level 101 or higher versions of some lower tier anomaly monsters. The Dragon Jewel is unlocked from level 101 or higher Lunagaron, Magma Almadron, or Tigrex. The Bolt Jewel is unlocked from level 101 or higher Magnamalo, Garangalm, Nargakuga, or Berioth. The Frost Jewel is unlocked from level 101 or higher Anjanath, Puki Puki, Rathian, or Toby Kadachi. The Stream Jewel is unlocked from level 101 or higher Bishatan, Daimyo Hermitar, Kezu, or Tetranodon. And then the Blaze Jewel is unlocked from 101 or higher Great Baggy, Great Ragi, Great Azuchi, or Kuli Yaku. One jewel for each star level of previous afflicted monster boosted past level 100. So, if you are using elemental builds in general, you have quite the task ahead of you if you want to get these brand new upgrades. On the subject of hidden decorations as well, there is another one that is quite neat, bringing in a whole new skill. If you are already Anomaly Research level 111 or higher, then you probably know about it as Bahari does straight up tell you to visit the blacksmith when you unlock it, but if you are a lower level, this might just give you the 
the incentive to push your anomaly level higher even faster, because once you reach level 111, you unlock a brand new Rampage decoration for the Bloody Heart skill, which gives you a damage increase proportional to health recovered by attacking when you are inflicted with the Blood Blight status. The actual bonus this gives is relatively good, maxing out at a 30 raw addition when fully active, which makes this at least comparable with the anti-species Rampage duels. It may not be active for an entire hunt, and when it is active, you still have to power it up slowly, but when it is powered up, it is actually quite strong, even relative to those. When talking about the anti-species decorations, though, it is hard not to mention this tiny change you may or may not have noticed as part of this update. The anti-dragon rampage decoration has been stealthily renamed in this batch to just straight up anti-wyvern jewel. The skill was always called wyvern exploit, the one that it gives you, but now the jewel actually matches the name to avoid any further confusion. On a similar note, an actual skill itself has had a full-on name change as well, and this one was actually a bit confusion causing in itself, as this skill shows up on a new monster's armor and it's called Burst. But when you look at the description of Burst, it is exactly the same as Chain Crit, which we already had. As a result, you may have already put the pieces together, but for anyone who hasn't, Chain Crit has been renamed to Burst in this title update, probably due to the old name of the skill having the word Crit in it, while the skill itself didn't affect crits or affinity in any way at all, so it makes sense to change it, really, even if it did cause some confusion within the community as a whole to do so. It's reasonable. It sounds reasonable. Another change that we've had that wasn't just blasted all over the place is to the Curious Weapon Crafting. This augment system has been updated as well, and now by acquiring monster parts that you can only get from killing certain monsters above level 100 and afflicted investigations, you can unlock an extra augment slot for your weapon to now reach a total of six slots, as well as then providing an upgrade to the attack augments too, which can now reach level three, which takes up six slots of augment for a plus 15 raw attack bonus. As well, there are further upgrade options for element boost too, now going up to five slots maximum for a boost of plus 15 if you reach this per weapon. None of the other augmenting options seem to have gotten extra levels, only attack and element, but this still lets you mix and match in some more interesting ways regardless, so I'll take it. Now for a much less quantifiable change that you probably won't actually notice unless you really look closely, charm melding RNG has been adjusted slightly. Specifically, the reincarnation melds where you recycle old charms to get new ones has had an increase in the likelihood to have secondary skills. This won't change the way that you treat melding in the slightest really, but it will give you somewhat better results every time that you do this kind of meld. So while it isn't something that changes how you act, it could quite well have an effect on you eventually, making it simply easier to get better talismans. Another neat thing that they sort of snuck in here as well is the addition of the Goku room decoration. You can get this from the lottery at the item shop, and while this isn't necessarily the only new trinket they've added, it is quite special as it actually canonizes the existence of these beautiful little ducks in the main series, which originally were a frontier exclusive creature before this. Then we have a cool interaction in the Violet Mizutsune fight. We all know it's crazy giant bubble supernova attack by this point. I mean, it's just awesome. And instinctively, when you see this thing start existing up in the air, you probably choose to run away. I mean, it just makes sense. Big threatening orb of doom. You don't want to be anywhere close to it. And it has literally no chance of hitting you if you just run away the second you see it. But as was found out by Reddit user Yuri underscore harem, there seems to be some sort of DPS check or flinch mechanic involved in this attack, where if you can reach it and cause this, the bubble will actually turn orange and then turn on Mizutsune itself, causing damage to the monster instead of you. And then the final thing today is about a neat interaction between the new Embolden skill on Violet Mizutsune's armor and the Guard skill. The Embolden skill, among other things, increases your guarding capacity when a monster is directly targeting you. What this means in actual effect is that it gives you levels of the Guard skill. What is interesting though about this is not only does it stack with the Guard skill itself, but if you use both skills together, you can surpass the natural limits of Guard. In Rise and Sunbreak, for whatever reasons, the actual hidden maximum Guard power of any shield is 10. With guard power 10, you can block any attack in the game that doesn't count as a super attack and only get the small flinch as a result. Obviously, you cannot reach this through regular methods as the guard skill itself only goes up to 5, and certain weapons have certain boosts in different situations, but embolden itself also seems to be the equivalent of guard 5 when used at level 3. And so when you use 3 ranks of embolden with 5 ranks of guard, bam! Attacks that would normally flinch you significantly when blocking will now only give you a tiny flinch. How neat is that? And that's everything so far, everyone. Let me know in the comments if you found anything else special about Title Update 2, things that you think other hunters should know about, or just things that you think are cool and not being talked about enough. I hope you enjoyed this collection of little tidbits of knowledge about this title update. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. <laughs>
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>